Welcome back, boys and girls. Today we're going to read a book called Giraffe Problems about a giraffe who did not like his neck. I feel bad about my neck. I do. I can't help it. It's too long, too bendy, too narrow, too dopey, too patterned, too stretchy, too high, too lofty, too necky. Yes, my neck is too necky. Everybody stares at it. This guy, him, that guy, her, them, whatever that is, her again, Yep, I feel bad about my neck. I've tried dressing it up. I've added a scarf, two scarves, a bundle of scarves, a mountain of scarves. I've tried bow ties and regular ties and both. I've tried hiding it away. I've used shrubs. I've hung out in ditches. I've stood behind trees. I've spent time in the river. Other animals have necks that just work. Take a gander at this zebra's neck. Stripes always look good. So classic. Quit staring at me. Or gaze upon this elephant's neck. Strong and powerful yet graceful. Stop talking about me. Or glimpse this lion whose neck is adorned with a glorious mane of flowing locks. What a sight! How inspiring! Why can't I have a neck like that? Are you always this loud? My mom always said I should be proud of my neck. She said other animals would love to have a neck like this. Yeah, right. No offense, Mom, but nobody wants this neck. It's a neck only a mother could love. It all makes me want to hide until the sun sets. Sheesh. Good evening. I've been admiring your neck from afar. Oh, how I wish my neck looked like yours. I get so much done in a day. Goodness, I can only imagine all the reaching and grabbing and looking around I'd do. I'd accomplish many of my goals for sure. Meanwhile, I'm saddled with this little excuse for a neck. Here, watch me try to stretch it up. Ugh. See? That's about as far as it goes. Pathetic, right? I'm basically necklace. <sighs> you feel bad about your neck, too? Yep. Huh. I'm Cyrus, by the way. I'm Edward. It's lovely to meet you, Cyrus. Can I tell you something, Edward? Of course, Cyrus. There is a hill in the distance, which you can surely see from your great vantage. I've stood on that very hill for seven straight days now, staring skyward, watching as a single piece of fruit, a lone banana, slowly changed from green to yellow, ripening. I've endured windy nights and unseasonably brisk mornings with very little sleep as I waited and waited, hoping against hope that the fruit would drop before me so I could sample its sweetness and nourish myself in the process. Yet, day after day, I felt like such a fool as I stretched my neck toward those greedy branches only to be limited by my own physical shortcomings. You want a banana from a tree? That's what I said, yes. Plunk. Here you go.
Wump! Oh, you did it! You made it look so easy! Munch, 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 munch. Delectable! So that's what a banana tastes like, huh? It was worth the wait. Edward, face it, your neck is impressive. It allows you to do amazing things. For instance, you just solved my week-long banana dilemma in 10 seconds. Well, thank you, Cyrus. I think you have a swell neck, too. It's elegant and dignified, and it works well with your shell. That means a great deal to me, Edward. Say, do you like bow ties, Cyrus? I'm, I'm not sure, Edward. I have very little experience with them. You look wonderful, Cyrus, as do you, Edward. I feel good about our necks, Edward. Thank you, Cyrus. For once, so do I. Yes, for once, so do I. The end. What a great story that teaches us to like and accept ourselves just the way we are. Of course, our friends can help us too. I hope you enjoyed the book. See you next time. Bye.